So good morning, church. Uh, I have the, the honor and the privilege to, uh, to give the word this morning. And, um, you know, as, as pastor, when pastor gives me the, the hint, hey, you know, start working on something, I think you're going to be given the word. So things, you know, God starts speaking to me and, and you know, we've, we've been on this theme of the Holy Spirit. And we've been on this theme for the, you know, pretty much for the last month or so. And so I, I started thinking about that and God started coming to me and, and you know, I want to focus really today on the, the idea of what role can the Holy Spirit play in our lives. And th the key word there is can, okay, because it's not going to unless we do our part as Christians and, and we do and we focus on our responsibility. So the Holy Spirit in our lives um, and very quickly, why do we need the Holy Spirit in our lives? Because if we don't fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit, and, and this is the way I'll put it, is that we are living a suboptimal life. We're not really living to our fullest potential as Christians. We're not engaging in the power or the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I liken this to um, basically right now what I'm doing is coaching during the summer. I'll be teaching, but I have athletes coming in to practice and they have talent and they have skills and some of them are natural athletes some of them are you know they work they have to work on it you know and they get training okay and they get coached and already just the first two or three weeks I know who is taking advantage of that instruction who is taking advantage of that training and what I'm seeing is those students are excel those athletes are excelling and those athletes are seeing the fruits of their labor. They are, they are not suboptimal anymore. They are optimal. They are now achieving their potential. And it's the same thing with students. And, and we pray for our teachers and we have many teachers in church. We see that with our students. We see people with natural gifts. We see people with abilities, but they don't take advantage of that. So without the Holy Spirit, yes, we can come to church and we can pray and we can read the Bible, but without the Holy Spirit, we're not achieving that full potential as Christians. And there are so many other analogies, whether it be at work or, you know, with friends or, or anything like that, any sort of skills or any sort of things that we do. So we cannot live full Christian life by ignoring him or being ignorant of the Holy Spirit or his ministry. So through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are saved we are filled, and, and I'll get into later on why it's important to be filled with the Holy Spirit, because if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to be filled with something else. We are sealed, we are protected, and we are sanctified. We are made holy, we're purified. And this, these are all things that when we pray protection, when we heard the prayers of protection for our, our students going to college, our youth, and that is something absolutely you should keep in their prayers, because young people are, are such a target today. And, and I'll get into that a little bit later as to what the Holy Spirit helps us do in, in protecting us from, from, you know, from evil. So it, the Holy Spirit reveals God's thoughts. It teaches and guides believers into all truth. And we live in a, na a day and age where truth is this kind of malleable thing where it, is there truth? You know, if you talk to some people, they're well, that's not true, and this is not true. Well, we as Christians should know what is true, and the Holy Spirit gives us that knowledge of what is true. The Holy Spirit also helps us Christians intercede and when we are weak, and this is something that we need on a daily basis because we are weak. We think we're strong, but we're not. Uh, we think we uh, can handle all the challenges and adversities of daily life, but we can't on our own. We you know, you do it on your own for a while, and then you break down, and then you get depressed, and then you get angry, and you lose patience, and, you know, things like that. So, a little shameless plug here for you, Pastor, but if I was watching and re-watching uh, Pastor's Corner, which, which you know is every Wednesday, but I looked at the last five or six Pastor's Corners, and these are things, again, that can help us understand the Holy Spirit and impart and, and have it be imparted in our lives. So, uh, if you go back, Pastor talked about studying the word, you know, cultivating relationships with the Holy Spirit. So one of them was studying the word with other believers. These are things that you can do 
to, again, to, to allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life. Praying on your own and with other believers. Studying the word on your own or beginning to study the word on your own. Spending time in silence and solitude. Fasting. That's my least favorite thing that pastors start saying, oh, we got to fast. Yes, we do. We have to spend time fasting. Some of us do it better than others. Uh, learning and practicing spiritual gifts and beginning to evangelize. So these things that pastor brings up and that he talks about or that he, he puts in his videos that we should be watching, these are things that, you know, are a, a, accompany the sermon and actually you know, when you see the title of the sermon or pastors mentioning these, th there's ways to do it. So when I say, what role can the Holy Spirit play in your life? Well, if you do these things, it will, okay? So that's why I say can, it depends on us, and it depends on what we're willing to do. But I, I'm really going to talk about what it can do for us, um, you know, and, and we know, and, and some of you walked out, and you're like, wow, it's a little chilly today. I think the fall is coming early. We talk about how we think the fall is coming. And when we talk about changing of seasons and we talk, you know, New Year's, people start to, oh, I'm going to make these changes. I'm going to do this. I got to change the, get the winter clothes or the fall clothes down and put the summer clothes away. And some people, you know, after New Year's, everybody wants to get in shape. After Easter, when you see people that you've never seen come to church and they're, they're like, I'm going to start going to church now. So as, as the fall comes upon, let's use that mentality that humans have to change. Okay, we're going to make change, okay? Let's use that to invite the Holy Spirit into our journey, into that change. Uh, I go into school. Us teachers go into school. So we got to make those changes. We got to get up earlier. We got to prepare our lunches. We got to, you know, avoid that traffic. Uh, some of us, our children are going to school. So we got to do all those preparations. So let's use the fall season that's coming to... Uh, bring the Holy Spirit into our journey, all right? We're embarking back. Some of us are embarking on new journeys, uh, but some of us are going back to the same things that we, we usually do this time of the year. But we forget to seek the Holy Spirit. And that the Holy Spirit is, and I'll get into this, that he's our counselor, he's our teacher, he's our provider. So we get ca caught up in this kind of new, oh, the fall and the winter and the seasons and things like that, but we lose sight of we do those temporary changes when we need to make permanent changes. And those permanent changes are giving the Holy Spirit a permanent place in our life. Amen? So what can, what role can the Holy Spirit play in our lives? Can. I highlighted can because it's like, is it going to or is it not? It depends on us. This, you know, the relationship we have with the Lord is he's there for us. He's always there. All the things are there for us to do, but are we going to take advantage of that? So we're not robots. He didn't make us robots. He gave us choice. He gave us free will. So can it play a role in our lives? Will it play a role in our lives? But if it does play a role in your lives, what does it do? And the first verse that I'm going to bring up, and, and you guys can open up your Bibles, is John chapter 14, verse 26. So one of the roles that the Holy Spirit can, again, if you choose to allow it, play in our lives is that it teaches and reminds us. So if you look at John chapter four, 14, verse 26, the Bible says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. This is something I just went over with the children's church just last week. Helper means advocate or counsel, like a lawyer, like somebody who, you know, if you go to court, you need a wise counsel. I saw the other day um, somebody who obviously wasn't in their right mind become, he's, I'm going to be my own lawyer. You're going to jail, dude. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know the rules of the game. You don't know when you can object or when you can present evidence. You don't know anything. We, we think we know. We watch TV and law, legal shows, and we think, oh, you know, we think we know. We don't know. We think we know how to operate in life, but we don't. So the Holy Spirit is our advocate, is our counsel, is our lawyer, is our representative. And it's wise. It's not one of these, you know, crappy lawyers that doesn't know what they're doing. 
okay? It's the best, the best advocate, the best counsel. And we need to be reminded of those teachings. We need, we need to be reminded of the things we need to do as Christians. So just like a lawyer advises their clients in how to navigate the legal world, the Holy Spirit allows us and advises us on how to navigate this world. So this gift allows us to act correctly in times of trouble and trial. All right, if you think of, you know, you think you're accused of a crime and you have to go to court, you know, that's trouble, that's a trial. But we deal with our own trials and trouble in everyday life from bad decisions we make, from not owning up to our responsibilities, sin. So again, think of just totally being unprepared for a court case and that you need that lawyer. We need the Holy Spirit as our teacher, as our tutor, preparing for a test. If you don't have that knowledge, if you don't have that foundation, you know, there's a point where you go on your own, but you need that foundation, you need that tutor, you need that teacher. The next verse and the next role that the Holy Spirit can, will it, can play in our lives is it convicts the world of sin. And I, when I was putting this together, I'm like, what? Convicts the world of sin. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? What, what is it? And, and it is absolutely vital to living as a Christian in today's world. So verse, uh, John chapter 16, verses 7 through 8. The Bible verse is John chapter 16, verses 7 through 8. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So in addition to being our counsel, but, you know, the Holy Spirit convicts as well. The Holy Spirit will prove the sin, righteousness, and judgment of the world. This is understanding what is right and what is wrong in this world. If we follow the teachings of Christ, if we allow the Holy Spirit into our lives, we understand what is wrong in this world. We live in a world today where we're getting all these messages from all over social media. From our, our students, our youth that are, that are going to college are going to be, unfortunately, are going to be bombarded with, with wrong things, with wrong information, with sinful ways with um you know evil teachings and things like that and we as christians need that holy spirit we need that and i'll I'll talk about it later that compass that always points to true north to remind us of what is sinful and what is wrong and in order to do that you need to know the truth so the holy spirit keeps that internal compass that we have as our true north and if you go camping or if you go hiking and you have a good compass you're, not, you're never going to get lost. You will always know which direction true north is. So as Christians, we need to allow the Holy Spirit into our life as, a, again, we can read the Bible, we can take classes, we can listen to the sermon, but we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit because a lot of us in situations can falter without the Holy Spirit. We can say, well, we kind of know this is wrong, and yet... Some of us will, will fall to that and will fall to sinful ways or will, will, will and, and I hear it from people who I know who call themselves Christians. They, oh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's all right. That's the way the world is today. Okay. But uh, the Holy Spirit is that compass. That's what we need. We need that, that, that true north that always keeps us in the right direction. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 11. Another role the Holy Spirit can play in our lives is through spiritual gifts to believers. Spiritual gifts is the key here. 
in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 7 through 11, says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one in the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So the variety of gifts that are given to believers is, and here's the key, is for the building up of Christ's body, of the church. So this gift of wisdom, wisdom, spirit, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, tongues, etc., can translate into ministry of teaching, ministry of intercessors, dance ministry, worship ministry, and so forth and so on. So those gifts that the Holy Spirit can impart in us um, allows us to partake more in the, the ministry of the Lord, the building up of Christ's body, which is our goal as Christians, is to build up the body of Christ, is to build up the church. A lot of people use those gifts, and, and, and again, like I, I used the analogy of the athletes before, that they, they waste their talent, they waste their gifts. So many of us have these gifts, or many of us can cultivate those gifts through the Holy Spirit, and and in turn, when we receive those gifts, I mean, the gift of knowledge is an amazing gift. Will we use that for ourselves or will we use that for the benefit of God, for the building up of the church of God, for the, the ministry of God? And, and a lot of us are shy and a lot of us don't want to use those gifts. But these are things, again, that can, it can play a part in our lives. Uh, the next a verse that I have is, is also in 1 Corinthians. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. And that is, he dwells, the Holy Spirit dwells in believers and fills us. And the, and the, the thing here is that if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, then nothing else can, you're already full. Okay? It's like when you're at capacity and they turn you away. Well, think of all the sin out there, all the evil things trying to get in. If you're full of the Holy Spirit, you're at capacity, nothing's coming in. Nothing bad is going to be coming in. So it says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? The Holy Spirit is God's presence in the lives of believers. So how do we know that? So again, if we're full of the Holy Spirit, we're not going to allow all these attacks and the things that we face and the trials and tribulations we deal with, it's, it's, we're going to be full already, we're not going to be allowing any of these attacks. And when the pastor says, you know, in praying that the attacks of the enemy uh, will not succeed, if you're full of the Holy Spirit, they're not going to succeed. Amen? But how do we know we have evidence of the Holy Spirit, that we're filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit? And that is, of course, what the fruit of the Holy Spirit is. Because, you know, a tree that is properly nourished and taken care of will bear fruit. So in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And I'm reading these. I got to work on these as well. I mean, I, I have I, my beautiful wife, my beautiful patient wife knows that I struggle with these, as, as many of us do. I think a lot of wives struggle with it and their husbands in some of these, you know, self-control. I, 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 I'm patient with certain things, and then there's certain things that I'm not patient with. And these are things that I struggle with. And pray for me, and in all seriousness, in all seriousness, pray for me in being more patient. Because, again, there's certain things that I'm patient with, and there's certain things I'm very impatient. I can get agitated. 
and I become an, an irritable person. So I need to be filled more with the Holy Spirit so I can be bear, bear this fruit of patience. Amen? More evidence of this is if we're led by God. Okay? Are we making decisions in our daily lives? Are we making decisions, uh, very important decisions, even minor decisions? Are we making those decisions based on what God wants us to do? Are we being led by him or are we still trying to control that vehicle? You know, the, it, when I drive to work, I, Pastor probably knows what I'm talking about. In Jersey City, there's a spot near my high school that you have uh, people who are practicing driving. They're, they're, it's, a, it's a kind of a nice lonely spot there where people can train parallel parking and watching some of them driving training it's it's they're not in they they have no control over that vehicle they have no control and it's it's like don't hit me so that's us living our life on a daily basis without the holy spirit because we're trying to control that vehicle of life and we're crashing and we're hitting the curb and we're making illegal turns and we're speeding and and is that you <laughs> so we're swerving we're hitting obstacles or should we let god take control so if god is in control if god is making those decisions and guiding us and making those decisions then then that is evidence that the holy spirit is in you amen so another role, and, and I'm going to turn, uh, ask that you go to Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 27. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 27. This is, this is such a, a huge, I mean, they're all extremely important, but the Holy Spirit helps in a Christian's weakness and intercedes for us. When we pray for other people, to, you know, there are times, there were times where I know I wasn't living a Christian life and that, um, you know, I was, I was the one I thought I was in control and I'm driving my own vehicle and I wasn't. And so many situations where I should have been dead or made a horrible mistake that would have changed my life. To, but I had people around me praying that the Holy Spirit would intercede for me and watch over me. Grandparents, parents, uncles, cousins. I mean, and so it's not only for us, but it's for those we love and we care about and for our friends, our neighbors, our fellow congregants here. But the Holy Spirit helps in a Christian's weakness and intercedes for us. So Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 27 Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. We all times we feel weak, we don't know what to do, we are led astray. But the Holy Spirit helps us line up with God's will during those times. And that's the thing, line up, to be lined up with God's will. If we're out of line, that's where that phrase out of line comes from. Right, if you're out of line, you're in the wrong. So being the right is lining up with God's will. And he intercedes for us. He comes in, he intercedes for us, he watches over us, he strengthens us during difficult times, he shields us from the attacks of the enemy. And this is, again, why we need to pray as the school year begins. Our children are going to be going off to school. Our children are going to be going to college. Um, some of us are going to be starting new jobs. And that's a time for many of tremendous weakness. Because the tendency for young people in particular is they want to fit in. They're in a new school. Or for many of us, they haven't been in school for a very long time. So they're meeting new people, new teachers. And there's this tendency to, I just want to fit in. I want to make friends. And that is a very weak time for young people in particular. But also for some of us who are in new jobs. Some people will start a new job and they'll, um, you know, they want to make friends, they want to fit in, and then, you know, it's this kind of go with the flow thing. And then that is, and that's why it's important to understand truth and, and lies and, and, you know, what what is sin and what is not. 
so we don't go with the flow. We need to go with God's flow. Amen? Amen. So the Holy Spirit helps us line up. Okay, get in line. You're not in line, you, you're getting lost. You, you know, this, the, the, the players that uh, show up late to practice and they're not in line for warm-ups, as much as they are late, that's how, that's how much they're running. So we had a kid 15 minutes late. You're running for 15 minutes, dude. You weren't in line, and that's where we go. That's where sometimes God punishes us, or he allows things to happen because we're not in line. We're out of line. He gets us in line. Sometimes we get off easy. Sometimes we don't. Amen? Uh, the last one, the last verse not the last verse, second to last verse, but the last way, the, the, and there are more. There are so many more, but I don't know. I know Pastor likes his Sunday afternoon, so. <laughs> I don't want to keep. Uh, so another role that uh, the Holy Spirit can play in our lives is to make believers new and give them eternal life. So in Romans chapter 8, verse 10 through 11, I, I love... Uh, you know, every time I watch The Passion of the Christ, the, uh, the scene where he says, I make all things new, it just hits me. Because no matter what you've done or no matter what, you know, if you think of just dead skin or just, just dirt on top, it's just, he just wipes it away. He can wipe it away. He can peel off that sin. He can peel off that, that dirt off of you and just make all things new. So in Romans chapter 8, verse 10 through 11, and if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Amen. Amen. So the spirit works in the lives of believers to renew, to sanctify, to make us holy. And as the Spirit raised Christ from the dead, the Holy Spirit gives eternal life to believers in Christ. So our sinful ways get peeled away. And it's, it's not like you're bare, and it's not that he's peeling those things away and not replacing it with something. He's replacing it, we're replacing it with godly characteristics. So we are substituting that that dead skin of sin and, and renewing your skin, renewing your body with godly characteristics. So I, I am a fan, I, pastor, and I see this is the thing, when you get to know pastor and you hang out, we like cars, we talk about cars, and we, we all have, you know, I like vintage cars. I like those old school cars, the 69 Camaro is one of my favorites, but I like watching the shows where they take this old beat up vehicle and people see, eh, that thing's never going to run, it's unsafe, it's, it's got a broken this and that, and, and the Holy Spirit is like a vintage restoration where it, they peel off all the rust and they replace the tires and the brakes, and not only is the car new, it's better than it was before, because if you know old school cars, they have drum brakes and they have, you know, the steering, the AC never works, the wires, it, think of a a vintage restoration or resto mod as they call, where you're taking something old and you're making it new and you're making it better than it was before. And that's how I see how the Holy Spirit peels those sinful characteristics away from us and in, imbues us with godly characteristics. So I like to use analogies. <laughs> so um, just to, to go through again as, as a summary, as, as I'm ending my, my word here. So again, the role of the Holy Spirit can play a big part of our lives. And again, that question of whether it can or will or, will or will not is up to us as Christians. So the Holy Spirit teaches and reminds us. It convicts the world of sin. It gives spiritual gifts to believers. It dwells in believers and fills us. It helps us as Christians in our weakness and intercedes for us. And it makes believers new and gives them eternal life. Amen. 
So I want to leave you with, uh, before I end, uh, with a verse from uh, Titus, chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. And it says in Titus chapter 3, verse 5 through 6, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. So it's not by things we do. You know, it's, it's nice to do things and it's nice to be active in the church and, and volunteer, and that's great, but it's through... The, the washing of regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So the Holy Spirit is a vital, vital part of being a Christian, and it is something that, again, we have been talking about in church, but we talked about, I mean, the practical things that the Holy Spirit does in our lives, I've talked about today. So it again, again, it is up to us as Christians to really take charge of our lives and to, to take charge of our lives by putting Jesus in control. And we have to make that decision. That's something that God cannot do for us. We have to decide to take that upon ourselves. So that's my, serv my sermon for today. And uh, I thank you for, for listening. And I pray that um, the message that, that God filled me with to, to give to you, I pray that, that we take it and we leave it and we we, you know, as, as the year comes in for many of us, I know me as a teacher and many of us, you know, going back to work and, and our students, I just pray that um, we use it and we take it and we use it in our daily lives. So I want to pray before we uh, do announcements so if we can bow our heads. Thank you, Father God, for, for today, Lord Father God. We just thank you for, for waking us up this morning, Lord, and bringing us here to to hear your word, Lord Father God, and we thank you for your son Jesus who died on the cross for our sins, Lord. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we, we, we have access to, Lord Father God, this immense power, this immense gift that you've given us, Lord. We just thank you for the opportunity to, to have access to it, to have access to you, O oh Lord Father God. And this Holy Spirit, Lord Father God, that, that we need to fill our bodies with, Lord, and we need to fill our thoughts with, Lord, Father God. We, I just pray that it, it fills us, Lord, as we leave here today and it stays with us. So not just when we are in church, Lord, but when we're in our cars going home, Lord, when we are at our house, Lord, when we're at jobs, our schools, Lord, Father God, I just pray that it is always with us, Lord, Father God, that during our time of weakness, Lord, Father God, that your Holy Spirit strengthens us, that when we see the world say things and, and try to influence us, Lord, Father God, and things that are wrong, things that are sinful, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit fills us, Lord, and dwells in us, Lord, Father God, and, and, and is that constant, Lord, that compass, that true north compass that always ports, points us to your truth, Lord, Father God. I pray, Lord, Father God, that you renew us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you peel away the dead skin, Lord, of sin, Lord, Father God, and you fill us with your characteristics, Lord, Father God, with your truth, Lord, Father God. And as we leave here today, Lord, Father God, I pray traveling mercies, Lord. I pray for safety. I pray for healing, Lord, Father God, for those that are not with us today, for those that are ill, Lord, Father God. I pray for unity in this nation, Lord, Father God. I pray for peace and comfort for those families of those loved ones that were lost, Lord, Father God, abroad. I pray for safety and security for the storm that is coming, Lord, that is about to hit the American South, Lord, Father God. And I just pray that you protect those people and that you provide safety and comfort, Lord, Father God. And they, they know that you are their true refuge, Lord, Father God. That whether physical or spiritual storm that we face, Lord, Father God, that you are the rock that we build our house upon and you are our refuge that we will always be protected, Lord Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.